Okay, Bart, thanks for inviting me back to the Muscle Factory. Um, I've got a question that a lot of people have asked me, you know, expats, slightly older, yeah. like myself, wrong side of 40 now. What's the minimum amount of exercise that we can do to stay in shape? Minimum amount of exercise to stay in shape. Okay, two things you gotta think about. Most of the, to stay in shape, 80% of it actually is nutrition. So that's your food. You gotta get that under control. But if you're literally talking about exercise, you could get away with three times a week, 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah, that's okay for older you get. Yes. Now, you can obviously do more, but then you have the problem, as you get older, the more you do, the more you need to recover. When we're 20, you know, when we're 20, we're strong, invincible, we go out, party, we wake up, two hours sleep, and we can just carry on the day. We can't do that now because when we're in 20s and 30s, we had hormones that could help us recover and repair. As we get to 40, a lot of those hormones have become lower and lower. So our recovery is becoming slower and slower. So if we start training six days a week, we will fall apart. We will start actually creating injuries. Our stress will go up because we just cannot physically recover. And that even means if you're eating a lot of good healthy food, it still won't be enough because of the hormones in our body is just being reduced. We're just unable to recover as fast. Oh, so it's impossible. You can't, you're just going to overtrain and cause problems. You, yeah, I mean, if you're a sort of guy that's been training and being fit his whole life, then that, sh that won't be an issue because exercise itself slows the degradation of hormones. But if you've been an office worker and you wake up one day, you're 40, you've got issues smoking, high blood pressure and all that, to go from doing absolutely nothing to start exercising, you can only do three times a week. That's what my recommendation is. Could you do 45 minutes? Absolutely, but it cannot be super high impact. But if you have been training all your life, you know, I look at myself, so I've always been active. Yeah. If I was to train three times, I, I mentally think it's not enough for me. No. So is there a flip side yeah, as well? I mean, but, but again, you've been active your whole life. You haven't been sitting behind a desk. You've been doing, your body's been attuned to your habits, your activities for the last 20, 30 years. So for someone like you doing, say, four sessions or five sessions, it's possible and you can get away with it because your body has been in tune to that. But again, we're talking about the guy who's turned 40, 45, 50 or whatever. He waked up and he says, I really need to do something about this. Because how many guys come out of a situation where they've got metabolic syndromes, they're overweight, they've never really exercised, they suddenly get to that age where they go, I really need to do something about this. They can't just go from doing nothing to running a marathon. It takes time, right? Mm. So this is why, and it's very daunting because the guy who wakes up one day, he imagines or believes that he must have now hit the gym six days a week. And that is a big obstacle to get over because you're waking up one day and going, I need to do something about this, but I have to go to the gym every day to, to fix this? Absolutely not. Start slow. Start with two or three sessions a week. You're going to make a huge impact just on that alone. How quickly can you fix your body if you've been like, you, you haven't done much? It's like this. If you've been smoking for 30 years and you quit, it doesn't take 30 years to get over it. You know what I mean? So a lot of the guys, when they smoke, they have such a high tar buildup on their tongue that their their taste of food is almost null. They have to add a lot of salt and spices in it just to get any flavor in it. When they quit smoking, within about six months, the way they eat food changes because the body's very good at recovering and healing itself. So that the good news is, it's not gonna take you 30 years because of 30 years damage you've done to yourself. You could recover that in a very short period of time. But it, it's daunting to start because you think the obstacle is too great. Mm. It's like turning 50 and going, I wanna learn the piano. But you think this, the, the, this, the task is too monumental, so I won't do it. So you're never gonna learn the piano. But when you start, all of a sudden within one year, you're playing a whole song, you're like, hey, it is possible. It's just the initial thought of it, starting, getting your life back in shape. And okay, so you're plus 40, maybe 50, 60 for yeah. people. Yeah. What kind of training should you do? Wait, go for a run, what, what should you do? Okay, okay, so what I always recommend for guys who, who come to me and say, look, I've never exercised, I put them on three weight sessions a week. And that three weight sessions may last up to 40 minutes. And I train the whole body. I train you know, the shoulders, the legs, everything, three times a week. That gives them plenty of time to recover. Mm. Now, on the other days, they don't have to sit at home and do nothing. I encourage them to walk, not run. I encourage them to walk. Because most guys that come to me, they're overweight. They may be skinny, but they could be skinny fat. No, yeah. They're overweight. Now, running, 
it means inducing stress. The last thing you want to do is add more stress. Now, what stress does, it signals the body to burn sugar as energy, not fat. So if you're running, are you burning fat or sugars? So it's going to be sugars? It, you're burning sugar because you're putting your body under stress because your heart rate... And you're not touching your fat at all? Not at all. But yet you've got a sweat and out of breath and you think you're burning fat. Uh, you have the illusion that you're getting healthy, but what you're doing is, yes, you are creating cardiovascular health, but if your goal is to reduce fat, then you're better off doing brisk walks. What's better for your heart? To make your heart healthier? Body fat, lowering your body fat. Ah, oh, so just carry less body fat. Yeah, because think about, think about walking around with a 10 kilo dumbbell all day. It's gonna put a strain on you, isn't it? But is that not, ah, oh, yeah. But if you're training and you put a 10 kilo when you go for a run, is that not a positive thing? No, it's like this. You're gonna build a one-story house. So you get an engineer in and you said, I'm gonna build a one-story house, two bedrooms, one bathroom. The engineer goes, okay, he works out all the in technical structure. What size pump he needs to pump the water through everything, right? He puts it all together and he says, there's your perfect house. A year later you go, I'm gonna put a second story on. So you built the second story, but you didn't change the foundation. You didn't change that pump. So you don't get your heart healthier and your muscles bigger because you're putting the extra weight on. Right. So it's the thing is, when you start building muscle, you're building the structure. Yeah. When you're gaining fat, all you've done is you take one story house and you turn it into two story or three story. Well, that pump putting that water around hasn't changed. Yeah. So if you put muscle on and you gain weight through skeletal mass, you're actually building better structure. But if you're gaining fat, what are you doing is you're just putting more loads. You're just bearing more load on there, right? So you've got to be careful. Okay. So gaining muscular weight is okay, but gaining fat weight is not okay because your body says, I can't handle that excess weight on the same structure that I have. Got you. So don't watch the scale. Know really what your body composition is yeah, about. Yeah. And I think this is also where a lot of people go off the rails because they're fixated on the scale. Mm. But what happens if you've been training and you gained one kilo of muscle? Did you now suddenly... You think you've put on weight? You go, oh, this is all gone to hell. I've actually gained weight. Well, no, you gained the kilo, but you could have lost a kilo of fat. Now, here's the interesting thing. Muscle takes up five times less room than fat. So a kilo of muscle and a kilo of fat is completely different. If I have a kilo of muscle here, then a kilo of fat is about this big. Mm. So a tennis ball and a basketball, right? So if I lose a kilo of fat, I will notice that. If I gain a kilo of muscle, I'm not really going to notice that. Yeah, it's such right. a small you know what I always used to know is it was just how my clothes looked. Well, yeah, that's the end. Because there's two things I won't lie to you, your eye in the mirror and your clothes, mm -hmm. right? Because I've had a lot of people, they've lost, they've lost no weight, but their pants got loose. Yeah. So what happens is their body composition has changed. You've gained a little bit of muscle and you've lost a lot of fat. But on the scale, you look the same. That's yeah. the big difference. Okay. Let's summarize this. I wanted it nice and short. Yeah. You know, this is wrapped up within 10 minutes. You're the wrong side of 40. You're recommending train three times a week. Don't run, walk. Yeah. Mind what you eat. Go on, what, what would be a typical diet which you recommend? Okay, so one of the things that happens as we get older, our hormones start to diminish, especially in men and testosterone. In women, it's estrogen. So we actually have to start eating more protein because the body, the, the way it synthesizes protein is different from a 20 year old. The 20 year old can synthesize really fast. We can't, so we have to shift more towards the protein. Our body is very capable of making its own sugar, so why are we adding sugar to the problem, right? Sugar is one of the, the major causes of all chronic inflammation, so we've got to start looking at reducing the sugar. So now I'm talking like all your processed rice, potatoes, pastas, you know, your, your favorite donut, mm. your pizzas, your all. beer your beer, your alcohol, yeah. Then you're gonna start looking for good fats and good proteins. So you start looking more for chicken and beef, you know, eggs, that sort of thing. It's a minefield. Let's wrap it up here. What I will add though, for people watching, is if anyone wants to come and see you, it's it's always better. I enjoy our conversations. Yeah. If they're in Patia, they can come to Muscle Factory on a Wednesday Correct. and you'll be there. Yeah. If they're in Bangkok, they can go to your ASOC gym. Uh, uh, Anut. Anut. An Anut. Anut. Look it up on Google. I, I enjoy your conversation, so I think people should come and have a chat yeah. and use your gym. It's the best ones I've found. Yeah, it's, it's big enough for everybody. Not bad, eh? <laughs> okay, cheers, Bart. All right, thanks, mate.